Hey there, YouTube. It's Bossy T C Five here at AutoCon. So I'm Zach. What's up? My sleeping friend Paul. And I'm about to go see um, Wendy Lee. Um, a panel, which is gonna be fun. It's taking its time though, but it's gonna be so worth it. So worth it. A good experience. Some people playing video games, some cosplayers, some um, possible TV analysts or anything like that. A good time. Well, I'm gonna pretty much pause the video until she gets there. From Japan, arriving on the shores of California, I came in and observed a recording session that a friend of mine was engineering. And uh, they said, would your friend like to audition? And the clouds parted, and the sun came through, and I floated into the room. I was like, yes! I was thinking, I can do this. I, I can do this better than those people that are auditioning. I can do <gasps> This is really hard. Um, yeah, that was humbling. So I thought, OK, this is something that I really would like to make a focus of my career, and I could see a future for me is somewhere in animation. I didn't know how. I didn't know what I was observing was actually anime. But like three months later, I get a call that I was cast in Robotech as Vanessa Leeds, the one with the big glasses who's a bridge bunny. She's always afraid, sir, I think we're about to crash. <laughs> <laughs> nervous, girl. Very nervous. Um, but that was perfect. I was playing a character that was very new to her profession and not quite feeling confident in her shoes and nervous and and that's how i felt at the time it was wonderful i got to sort of go through all of my you know butterflies in my tummy and and get a good handle on what this amazing art form is uh, now become after all this time who knew well you guys knew <laughs> and um like i always say anime is a fan driven art form and it's you guys that make our worlds turn and we are so grateful for all of your devotion and the fact that you're here today and the sacrifices it takes to go to a convention and to save up your money and buy the things you love and I can't wait to go to the dealer's room and find some toys. <laughs> I, I remember when I was at the very end of um, recording the Cowboy Bebop series and I got to review the very last episode and that tragically too soon ended series I mean, people come out of balls of fire all the time and survive in other shows. <laughs> it's the deal. Um, but I remember watching it and just feeling so emotional about the journey I had taken with the character Fei Fei and how much I loved my cast members and how tight we were and how beautiful the evolution of discovering what that show was all about was as a team. And um, Mary Elizabeth and I, who was directing her first show she ever directed and we were reviewing and at the end we kind of turned and looked at each other we both kind of had tears coming down our eyes and I said is it wrong to have a crush on an animation character <laughs> <laughs> so I know I'm in good company here yes. <laughs> Um, but it's an amazing thing, the attachment you can feel with these characters, and I'd like to believe that a lot of that comes from what we can evoke emotionally in an auditory fashion, you know, putting all of your acting into your voice and honing that like an instrument is quite an art form. It's a fascinating art form, and it's super challenging. It's very right brain, left brain, super technical. You've got to match the flaps. As a director and a, a story adapter, um, you know, production person myself, I'm, you know, just completely fastidious about those things being just right. So the viewer's never taken out of the experience of watching this stuff. So it feels as if it was written in English. So even if you are somebody that only does subtitles, and I think we can all get along here. <laughs> Keep in mind, when I put on my production hat, that every time that we dub something into English, it opens the market for that title by 75%, sometimes much higher, 90%. Um, so we need to, it seems like there's not as much of a battle between the two, or maybe people are being a little more discreet with the voice artist. I don't know. 
but um, it's really great support that uh, if we can support bo both sides, more content is released and you know things end up being broadcast, you don't have to buy it to see it. So I'm all for that. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I evolved over time just uh, working in more and more anime shows. I directed the first season of Digimon. I was working on Power Rangers. Oh, so fun. My favorite is the little guy on Digimon was little TK. And, and he's just a special guy. And he loves Matt because Matt's the bestest brother a boy could ever have. <laughs> I love that character. It was so much fun playing him. And um, from there, I went on to do a lot of other shows. Gosh, let me see if I can think of some of them. I did a lot of live action, too. I did uh, VR Troopers, Beetleborgs. Um, uh, what was the one about the twins? Sweet Valley High. Um, uh, and then I continued with Power Rangers. I worked a bunch with Johnny Bosch. Uh, so fun. They have a Power Morphicon convention in Pasadena, California this month, too. And that happens, I think, every two to four years, something like that. So there's just, you know, all this love and all this wonderful outpouring and, and this exchange to be able to come and meet, you know, people from the cast and then have some time with the fans, much like, like we do with anime. So... It's interesting how, like, Star Trek and Trekkies evolved into, you know, kind of what we're all doing here now. So I like that. And it's really wonderful to be a part of this whole art form. I have so much respect for it. And um, I love collecting the toys. <laughs> Um, so I can, you know, I can easily talk for an hour. That's never a problem for an actor. But I'd love to answer your questions if you'd like. You can um, feel free to step on up to that microphone. I'll keep talking if you don't have questions. But I'd love to answer your questions. And uh, please just, yeah, see, test that mic out. Let's see how it's doing. You might need to tilt up. Great. Oh, I heard that. <laughs> hey. Hello. Um, oh. I Yes, I do. And you are late! Okay, sorry. She's a tyrant. <laughs> yes. Yes, she is. And so, uh, um, one of my questions was, I was wondering what your personal thoughts were on the theory, the fan theory, of Keonism. How could I know that? How do he doesn't know any of that stuff? I, tell me your theory and then I'll give you my comments. Well, I always thought it was kind of... There you go. I thought it was kind of odd that Kion was the only normal person in the group. I mean, it, he, all, he all points out it's very odd, but it really doesn't make sense when you think about it. Harvey is only interested in, um, in, in extraordinary people, and so a, a lot of hints have dictated that Harvey also has a crush on Kion. So I think it would only make sense that uh, the way um, the world doesn't really revolve around Harvey, it revolves around Kyo. What? <laughs> if you are not an Esper time traveler or shapeshifter, you are dismissed! <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I, to me, she's, you know, she's oblivious to what's going. She doesn't realize how she affects the, a chain of events all around her by everything she does, so. What, I mean, what are your thoughts? Oh, <laughs> my thoughts are, um, um, uh, when do I get my paycheck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm, I was very excited about Haruhi in general because of a few things. One, I worked very closely with the director on the show and the whole production team. So that was really a, like a whole year and a half of my life very immersed in that subject matter and that team, creative team, which was great. Um, and also that we kept getting more things to do. We got to do the little chibi version. That was a blast. You know, take all these things that are Haruhi and then kind of make her a little squishier and faster. You know, that was just so much fun. And then having the film and then finding out she's not in very much of the film. Yeah. <laughs> that was disappointing. Um, I, I the that's true, that's true. Although I really love the way she kind of grew up and evolved, her look really changed a lot. I think her, um, it, what, 
the banter that she has with Keon is so get a room, but you know, <laughs> but no, is uh, is good because she really needs to be challenged. She's somebody that respects somebody kind of taking her down a notch as much as she acts like she's annoyed and agitated by it. It kind of blows her mind when he stands up to her, and I think it's. Uh, a good lesson for all of us to kind of keep the ego in check. Um, and then I'm also super fond of the fact that I got to record some of the singing for her. And I got to redo the lyrics and they, uh, you know, the company uh, Bondi approved my, my rewrites and that's always tricky because translating poetry can never be literal. It has to be sort of keeping the spirit of the poem in, intact. So. It was really fun doing her singing and um, everybody being in bunny suits in the band. <laughs> no, it's just a, all really, really great experiences. And uh, my second question is, you play Athena Sykes, so I was wondering if you played any of the, if you played any of the other Athena's Right games to prepare for the role. No, absolutely not, no. I didn't know anything. You know, it's, it tends to be best that you just go in as a blank canvas and let the production team paint all the characteristics onto that open, ready to work attitude and that you're much more malleable that way. That's why we don't give scripts out in advance because an actor memorizes their lines in a certain rhythm. And it's very difficult to undo a pattern that you have memorized. So it's much better just to come in in a great frame of mind, good energy, rested, uh, vo voice in good shape, ready to work. That's the best thing you can do. Um, but we've, I've had scripts in advance, and I've, done, I've, I've prepared and studied for roles before, but it, doesn't, it usually doesn't pan out because it'll, it can sometimes create a mindset where you're in conflict with the creative team. So yeah. That's kind of that, that's why we often don't know what's going on until we arrive. But it's like, what, who are we going to be today? Let's play. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Yay! Hi. Hello. You have a very large work of, uh, body of work in voice acting. You've also done a bit of voice directing. You weren't saying a very large body, were you? No, no, you weren't. Okay, okay. Oh, but some of my girls I've played have a very large body. I'm just saying, Grenadier. <laughs> I'm sorry, yes. So, I was thinking I should ask, could you describe the no doubt subtle differences between voice directing for anime and voice directing Conan O'Brien and Andy Richter? <laughs> that was an experience. <laughs> um, well, I was a stage director. I, I directed a lot of and produced a lot of musicals and theater throughout Hollywood and in the LA area. And I used to direct a lot of video shoots for uh, music videos and sometimes I would choreograph them. And uh, directing in general has its applications that are all a little bit spe specified to whatever the art form is. Um, for a live action, like for a play, there's a massive amount of preparation that um, the director has for the blocking, for, di for the stage design, working with uh, lighting design, all the things that go into making a, a really sharp production. So it tends to be full immersion for a short period of time and like not a lot of sleep. And for post-production with ADR and, and re-recording voices, um, it's uh, the real homework for me is preparing scripts. That's the stuff that is super consuming and when you're on a deadline and creative people need deadlines. <laughs> we hate them, but we really need them to make sure everything gets accomplished. Otherwise you can go back and rework stuff to death and never really finish it. So um, preparing scripts for me is the thing that requires the most discipline. Sometimes I'll be working at home in my home office, you know, all day and it's like two o'clock and I'm still in my PJs, you know. It's like, oh, maybe I should eat something. So, you know, you just kind of go, you get in a groove and you just go, go, go. Um, as far as directing actors, it's very, very different. With live action or stage, um, there's more sort of, it's just more physical in general. There's a lot of discussion about what's going on before and after a scene. Um, in a finished production and you're recreating the performance, it's more about previewing that specific line, that little chunk 
of dialogue that scene and uh, gleaning all you can from what you're getting from the production, whatever language, and primarily it is Japanese for us. And then uh, duplicating it in a way that it's still fresh. Uh, I often get in, the, the times that I knock heads with, with directors as an actress is when I'm feeling as if I'm just, um, what, parroting back what the Japanese did. And that's never what I set out to do. I always try to give it my own unique spin on whatever level. And not to change it for change sake, but to advance the plot, to make the story come alive more, you know, just another opportunity to perfect somebody's work. So everything is, is a little different, and for me, it's diversity that is what I thrive on. I love that one day I go in and I'm working with a big team from Japan and we're making a game and everybody's, you know, into it. We're making jokes and it's, the flow happens and you feel really good and you're jamming. And then another day I'm just an actress and I go from studio to studio and I just I tell my husband, I just get to be an actress today, which is, you know, what I set out to be. And that's my love, first love. And um, the majority of my work now is really directing. And I love that. But it's really fun to mix it all up. I did that as an actor anyway. I was a, I was a choreographer, I would do a little bit of singing, I had a band, I did you know, just all different kinds of things. And um, you know, that's, what, that's the whole key about finding work that you love. Just play all the time and then you don't really work. I mean, you work, you work, you work hard, but you're having fun, right? And that's of course what makes voice acting look so glamorous, but it really isn't. It's, it's a high volume of output in a really short amount of time because the budgets are really tight. So if we can create art in that little, you know, time frame, then yeah, that's that's the goal. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Let's rotate. Uh, first of all, I like to. Uh, I think the first moment that I finally registered you with your voice, despite having watched anime before, was when I started playing Heroes of Mighty Magic Three, and it's like, wait, that voice sounds familiar. And then uh -oh. I looked at the credit scroll, and there you were. <laughs> That happens. <laughs> there's, there's somebody online who just flips out every time they see my name in a credit. Like, and there's Wendy Lee once again. It's like, yeah, I got a mortgage to pay, dude. <laughs> God. So something along that vein, you've been in high, you obviously been in high profile roles. I mean, I remember when Bandai was releasing a press release about how Cowboy Bebop had shipped one million DVDs. Wow. You've also been in smaller titles, uh, titles that people, a lot of people probably have missed because niche subject, obscurity, lack of rules, whatever. Distribution, whether or not they get on the air. Yeah, there's a lot of variables. Yeah, if you look, when you look back at the smaller, less, well, I should say lesser known roles, is there anyone that jumped out in your mind as a voice actor, as a director that you wish people heard more? There definitely is. I mean, I've, again, I'd have to really look through the list, but there. Are, I'm thinking even uh, Megas XLR on Cartoon Network. Yeah. Woo! So cool. I mean, Steve Bloom gave the best girl scream as Jamie. It was just, it would kill me every time. I just couldn't continue recording every time he bust out that girl voice. Hello, chicks dig it. <laughs> um, so I kind of felt like we didn't really reach our full creative vision because we really thought we were going to get another season or two. And Cartoon Network said that um, mech shows really were past the curve. And then after they canceled us, they brought out two new mech shows. So we were pretty upset about that. Um, I was a little frustrated with Kiva because she was the academic, uh, technical mind of the future, and I felt that her character tended to kind of stay at a, a specific level, and we didn't get much deviation from it, and I really wanted to develop the character arc a lot more. So I was working with the writers and the whole creative team on that, and they were kind of getting sick of hearing it. So we were... We were working on it, like the episode where she goes to the mall and you know she tries Earth clothes on and you know the whole deal. But um, I think there was a lot of room for that show, and it was such a beautiful uh, team with Madhouse from Japan, and then our team here and a Cartoon Network team in, in Georgia and everything. And so um, that's frustrating. I've had a few others. I did this film, La Petite Cosette, something. I can't think of the whole name. You've La Petite Cosette. Thank you. 
There it is. That one seems very unknown to me, and it was so beautiful and very haunting, but a, a kind of an interesting um, just era. The whole thing just seemed very nuanced. I was challenged by that show. Um, I did the, uh, I think it was the 10 year re release of Akira, Akira, and played Kay in that. Um, I, I just, I don't know that many people that know about those things. Um, there's several. You seen it? Yay! The remaster is amazing. I mean, they redid so much of the animation. They did such a good job on it. They did the music, everything. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe one of my, um, maybe the woman in the first Austin Powers movie when he's coming out of uh, deep freeze, cryogenic freeze, and he's going through the conveyor belt, and they're. She's, their machine's washing him down, and then he's supposed to have his, supposed to urinate for the first time after all these years being frozen, and the computer voice says, evacuation complete, yeah. <laughs> evacuation complete, <laughs> evacuation complete, yeah, I got to be the VO on that, so that was, <laughs> that was fun. Oh. Thank you very much, and also thank, thank you. you for posting that photo of the English VA reunion of Cowboy Bebop. We just had it, yes. Uh, yes. Thank you. A anyone who'd like to join my Facebook page, it's Wendy Lee with all E's, W-E-N-D-E-E-L-E-E -E 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 dash artist. And I try to post photos as much as I can and announce things when I can. I, I'm very, very cautious about what I talk about, protective of my producers, because sometimes things slip. And now it could be a lawsuit, so we don't want that to happen. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Hi. Uh, good morning. Thank you again for coming. Thank you. For what it's worth, my uh, friends and I actually did find the portrait of Petit to set in a used video store. We just started start watching. It is, it is amazing. It is thank beyond you. amazing. Uh, I, I'm terrible at credits. I honestly do not know. What did you do on that show? I adapted the script, I directed it, and I played a few different voices on it. Well, um, yeah, now that you're saying, I think about it, that's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I wasn't a lead on the show. I was more in the production side of it. But um, I thought Who it was... Who cares? It's because like, everything, you know, every detail was the, amazing. Right? That's what I thought. Well, I'm glad I brought that up, and you were here to validate that right away, because I was feeling like it was uh, very yes, underappreciated. Uh, uh, then uh, let me just try and get everybody in perspective. Uh, it was the Monica before Monica, same director. Thank you. Thank you. Everything they did Monica, they did here first. Just say. Just say. Uh, yeah. The next question is, uh, it's a little bit too, a little bit professional, a little bit goofy fan indulgence. All right. Uh, you mentioned before that you always like to, to actually really add your own touches and what you can with the character. I've been a fan of Magic Knight Rayer since oh. I was. One I didn't think of. Yeah. Since I was uh, 14, and my mom got me the VHS for Christmas, and I bought every release I can. Yes. Uh, is there anything you could talk about that you feel you added to the character, your interpretation that was kind of different? Yeah, you need to talk about that because I love hearing about either either movie or Princess Emma or anyone else you can remember. See, now most people don't know I played Prince, Princess Emerald, so thank you. That's a lesser known character of mine, too. Um, to me, that show was girl power. It was, beef, you know, it was one of the original girl power trio sisterhoods. And it just, to me, it was, I wanted to update the whole, we can fight together, we can join together, we can, and we can be individuals. We don't all have to be just nice, nice all the time. There was conflict, uh, plenty of monsters. <laughs> there was, it was just a, um, a really cool trio to be a part of, and I loved my cast so much. I love those girls to this day. And um, to be able to join forces and, and kind of um, navigate all that and still, and, and, you know, and not succumb to just fan service. I mean, you know, it's just, <laughs> we were, they were just, you know, great individual chicks, you know. They, they banded together and they kicked ass. Uh, to, I guess the, my more indulgent question is, what did you actually think of the Clef Umi pairing? My friends are all like, well, well, I didn't see that coming, but they're happy, let's just go with no, it. No, I didn't see that coming either. I, I almost felt like it was sort of a default relationship, but 
he seemed really into it, and she joins in, so you know. It's like, okay, if you really love me that much, okay. And uh, <laughs> would you do the Yumi voice? Does any of it is special? Like, will you wish me a happy birthday in her voice? Is it really your birthday? A uh, couple days from now. Okay, what's your name? Avery. Avery, I just want to wish you a very, very happy birthday. And in the meantime, I want to protect you with Water Dragon! Thank you so much. <laughs>